Welcome to the Killing Podcast, Season 3, Episode 2, 17. 17. Where you're That's confusing. <laughs> <laughs> We're your hosts, Martha Southgate. And Rob Southgate. Right. Okay. Seriously, this first scene is Sarah with all the bodies. Like oh lake of bodies. my gosh. Okay, so the last episode ended with her finding the lake and all those body bags. Here we are, opening shot. Stand in there with all the body it's bags. It's just the most eerie image. It is so fantastic. This, I mean, it's not a fantastic thing that's happened. It's a fantastic image. It, this is setting up the season because in the last two seasons we had one person kill. I mean, it was all mm-hmm. about Rosie. This we got us a serial killer. Well, if, if this this show, yeah, is beyond good. In yes. this season, the first two seasons, I was like, "Yeah, it's a great show. You know, it's better than than many shows out right, there." But right. it wasn't what it could have been. This is what it could have been. Like, no, this, this is amazing. Is outrageously good. This is amazing. This I is... can't believe they ever canceled this. No, this I know. Season. I know. I know. Well, I, I think... think it's because too many people dropped off because they didn't like how the first two years kind of dragged. That the, the first season didn't wrap up the it story. It was too long. They lost too many people. Even though and it was great. And the characters weren't really compelling enough. This, I, I, I mean, I, a I know. bullet I know. Is, is just one of the greatest characters ever. And and just the all of it. I mean, it, it's really, really good. Right, right. Okay. So that's all I had to say. Okay, I, 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 I had totally agree that here. Editorial there. Okay, so, so Sarah's looking out at the bodies on the lake and the cops show up. And then Holder shows up. Now, this is Holder's case. Oh, he is not happy that she's working it behind his back. Right, Because right. she didn't, she didn't go to him and say, I'm doing this, I found this, I meant nothing. Right. She's doing it completely right. behind and, his back. And, yeah, and see, the thing is, he had already told Carl he wasn't going to do this. Right. But he's being driven the same way she is. Yeah. So, I mean, they're on a crash, uh, collision course here to be working together again. There's yeah. no question, but he's, it's all touchy right now. And she says, he says, what, what were you doing? What, what, what is this? She says, it's a crime scene. Mm-hmm. I called the cops. Okay. But she's holding the Legitimate. picture. She's holding the picture and she was obviously investigating. And not just that, her former partner shows up. Yes. And she shows him the pic. Oh, and- oh, oh, his name. You remember his name? I do. It's awesome. Skinner. Yeah. X-Files. A little X-Files action there. I just had to point but that one out. she shows him the picture, and Holder says, hmm, looks like the Seward file, which yeah. she claimed she couldn't find. Oh, you better go look for it. Yeah, yeah. So she, she, acted she like sent she didn't him know about on a it. wild goose chase mm-hmm. the whole time having the file, and here it proves it. Well, did she send him on a wild goose chase, or she was... She told him to go get it at the county, whatever. Oh, yeah. that's right. I forgot. Uh, yeah, she said, I can't, I don't know where it is. You got to uh, go find it. And he said, they don't have it there. And she's like, hmm, don't know. Don't know what to tell you. She had it. Yep. So this is quite the little yeah, there, there's a lot going there on here. because, you know. Okay, so. I think the, Holder, Holder treats her very differently than she treats him. And, and well, that, that happened all her, last season, Right, too. that's what I'm saying. But he holds her in a different regard. Then she holds him. And right. He would never have done that to her. Right. Right. Okay. So the police kind of go over this. There's a little debriefing. We get the details. There's 17 bodies in that pond. Well, and Lyndon is in charge of handling the the IDing of the bodies. Right. Right. So that just so we make that clear. Right. Right. Well, okay. 17 bodies in the pond. Mm-hmm. Same blade on all the bodies. Some completely decapitated. So, yeah, and this is lute- absolutely a serial killer. And the lieutenant lied about how they found the bodies. Right. Because he said it was he an anonymous, an anonymous tip. tip. Mm-hmm. Right. But it wasn't. Obviously, it was Sarah. Um, and also, an, um, another important thing here is one of these bodies is fresh. It's Ashley's. Mm-hmm. So that's a really important thing that we need to know. Um, so, yeah. When when Sarah's able to confront the lieutenant about it, why did you lie? Mm-hmm. Why didn't you say what happened? 
He says it's because of the Seward case. Well, he first of all, she tells him that she wants to go talk to Adrian, uh, it, yeah. and he doesn't agree. He doesn't want that. And he says, I don't want to give Seward a basis for appeal. Right. And same thing with this. If she's involved in this, yeah. it's it's all adding to this whole Seward thing blowing up. Yep. And, but he does give her her badge back. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I love this scene, too, because uh, he just hands her the clipboard and she signs he hands her the badge, and he goes, simple as that. After, After all, all that. that. <laughs> yeah. Harsh, harsh. So, uh, well, now we know why it's called 17, uh, with the 17, oh, yeah, 17 bodies. bodies. So, now we see Sh- Seward. Yeah, he's showering. Yeah. And he clearly has, we clearly see the A tattooed on him. It's A653. Oh, is that what it is? I only noticed the A. No, I, it's I a- obviously only clearly saw the A. It's A... Period six dot five dot three. Okay. Or they might all so be. So it's period. it's Adrian, and then that must be like his Adrian Ju- June fifth two thousand three yep. is my guess. Um, yeah, that's a good guess. And there's a razor blade in the soap. Yes. And he puts it in his mouth. Oh, I, you know what? Uh, right here, I wrote yikes with three exclamation points. I don't like any of that because he's either going to use it on himself, on somebody else, or what if he like accidentally swallows right. it or something? Oh, I don't like that. I don't like or the razor blade in the mouth. Or tongue or oh. anything. No. It's now, the tongue is actually... And ew, the tongue is one small. of those things that they say you can cut your tongue, and it's one of the fastest healing things. I have witnessed that with the kids I used to babysit for. No, don't talk about it. Because they would fall and bite oh, through their awful. tongue. And it would it would bleed like crazy, but it would stop fast. Yeah. So I oh. do see that. Yeah. So even but though it still, freaks me out... No. Yeah, No, yeah. thanks. And ew. It's oh, and then... Soap. What was the... Uh, Who's the obnoxious? What's the obnoxious talking guy? I can't. I don't never know his name. Oh, here I'll I just it. call him obnoxious talking guy. It's uh, hang on. Well, it's the guy who's across the cell. Hang on. From Seward. Francis. Fran- no, Francis is the guard. Right. Okay. We, okay. So we don't know his name, but the obnoxious talking guy. I just wrote. He just won't shut up. No. And at the same time, he should be a Francis, podcaster. <laughs> You know what? I'm sure people say that about us. Like, obnoxious talking guy, I know who that is. Mm-hmm. Won't shut up? I definitely know who that is. But Give Francis. 30 shows. <laughs> Francis is also taunting Seward about Adrian at the same time. He, okay. Adrian's not a good guy. Right. Adrian. Adrian's a kid. I mean, Seward Adrian is not is a good guy. Son. Seward is not a good guy. Right. But, and he's on death row. We know that. Things are not as they seem for this guy. Does he really need to be tortured this much between Mr. Talky and Francis, the talking uh, mule? The, ta- the talking I was going to say guard. the talking guard. Yeah, talking mule. <laughs> <laughs> do you remember those movies, or do you just remember the joke? I do. I re- I, I, I watched those movies. I liked those movies when I was a kid. I probably didn't. Yeah. Well, you probably didn't because you were you were that guy. I was but, so cool. Uh, yeah, you still are. <laughs> Let me tell you. So one of the homeless girls is... Le- it's Lyric. ...is with a cab driver, Joe. Right. It's Lyric. She's she's the one that, uh, what's her name, has a crush on, that Bullet has a crush on. Right. And she asks if he's seen Callie. And... Mm. Yeah. No. Well, she's she was doing, we'll say, favors for the cabbie. Yeah. And then he gives her something to eat he when fed she's her, yeah. done. Right, right. Asks about Callie. He says he doesn't know anything. Okay, but he's the guy Callie was avoiding in the other episode. Right, right. So why, what's up with that? And uh, he, it's weird. This guy's a really weird guy. You know, we know that there's something up with this guy. He's involved with these teenage prostitutes. But then, like, he feeds her, and then he says, go get yourself some mittens. Like, he's caring for her. Yeah, and so he, it's like it, this is a very weird. weird guy. And he told her about the bodies that were found, and yes. freaks her out. So she gets uh, back. Yeah, can you imagine? She's like run away on her yeah. own, and yeah, somebody's taking teenage runaways and putting them in body bags and in this thing. Yeah. Oh my god! So her boyfriend is asleep, right? And when she gets back to their room, she begs him to let her come to California, and she is scared. Oh. Out of her mind, as you could imagine. Completely nervous. And what does he do? 
Do you remember? No. He sleeps right through it. He falls asleep while she's sitting there all nervous and scared. Typical guy. Tip- yeah, that's so me. It is. Actually. It is. It, it is. Sadly, it is. Trust me. Trust me. <laughs> trust me. Yeah, when you've been scared that you're going to be killed um, no, as a teenage but... hooker, I fall asleep often. Well, yes. Of the, the three times that happened. The three times. Thrice. That, <laughs> that would have been 25 years ago, if uh, possible. All busted. So Carl tells Holder. I did the math wrong. Okay, this this scene. Let me just let me just take this for a minute. Okay. okay. First of all, we've got Carl tells Holder that Skinner and Sarah had hooked up back during their case. Yes. Okay. Seriously, this chick has been with everyone yeah, I, except, except Holder. Holder. What right. the heck? <laughs> She, uh. And what does that tell him? I mean, seriously, woman? She has some kind of thing where she really picks the wrong guy. But she seems to just pick any guy. Yeah. Except Holder. Right. The one guy who would be loyal and kind to you and. Right. And he's funny and he's so. And little cute. man likes him. And she goes to everyone. Everyone but. but him. Yep. Okay. So they catch a man with a teenager. Oh right, there's some low life guy under the under the the bridge or something, and he's got the teenager. Okay, and- so here's one of my favorite lines. Okay, so she claims she doesn't know the girls, and Holder says to her, "You're done bobbing for apples today, baby girl." <laughs> oh man! Wait, and- he says, <laughs> he says, "You're done bobbing for apples today, baby girl. You need to find another way to pay for those braces." Oh. Uh-huh. Awful. <laughs> Just wrong on so many levels. But, yeah, it's so funny. I mean, so whole. The dialogue is so great. Um, so she, she and caves. And, yeah, but he asks about Bullet specifically. She doesn't know. He asks about Callie. No idea. But she caves and tells them where they might be. Right. Yeah, where she She gives a be. little info. Mm-hmm. And Holder lets her go. And sends the guy on his merry way, too. Uh, so, uh, okay. Callie's mom. Here's another piece of work. Uh, she is, she does hair out of her place. Mm-hmm. So now we're getting a little more clear picture of her. Uh, and she's doing, she's got some woman there. She's cutting her hair and Sarah shows up. Yes. And. Because somebody cares about this woman's daughter. Right. Right. Uh, Sarah threatens her with child services. The same child services uh, that we're looking kettle. into Jack. Uh, the mom at this point is still not helpful at all. And, and. I mean, come on. She tells her to just go find Bullet. Right. And I wrote Mother of the Year, but she was competing with Sarah for Mother of the Year, and I think she might be worse. Is, is worse. So Sarah's feeling pretty good about herself. Hey, it's right like Rodney Dangerfield now. said if you want to look thin, hang out with fat exactly. people. Exactly. If you want to look like Mother of the Year, hang, hang out, out with, with Callie's, Callie's mom. mom. Right. So, Bullet. Oh my gosh! Okay, she so, was beat up. Right, we saw that in the last so episode. So terribly by Goldie. Right, she went to Goldie's and he attacked her, and now we see the aftermath. She is really bruised. I, I, I mean, really, really bad. And Holder catches up to her, and she tells him about Goldie, and he and Carl go and break in, and it's a video. Yeah. There's a video. Oh playing. my gosh. Cause she was saying, I heard a girl. I heard it. Well, it right, was right. a video. Well, we remember that we could hear something through the, the yeah, door, through the wall. And I totally thought that he had somebody captive in there. Yes. But it's not. He's got, he's Videos, like dubbing he's a pervert pornography, like child porn back in there. Oh, but you they know caught what? him. Big saddy face on my, my notes there. But they caught um, him. She says, uh, also, she, Bullet tells him that she saw that he has a knife and that she saw it. It's a big one. Uh, so they're in there. They they catch this guy. But, I mean, this whole situation, this is a really tough situation. Now, once again, just like they've done in the past, everything is pointing at Goldie. Mm-hmm. And I don't think Goldie's going to turn out to be our guy because too obvious. But, man, I hope they get this guy off the streets because he is a scumbag. And he's just waiting for problems to happen, you know? Mm-hmm. So, anyway, I wrote, got him. So that's it for that. Him. They got Goldie. Hopefully, they're going to stop this. Uh, I love that too because that's when uh, when Goldie tries to sneak by Holder. Holder, Holder knocks him down and starts kicking on him. <laughs> that was like 
Yeah, yeah, you are a bad dude. Holder is not putting up with no. it. So it kind and of reminds the, me of that one when the guy in the farmer's market ran and Holder got him, oh. tackled him. Same kind of thing. Well, and, and he really identifies with Bullet, and he really likes her. Right. And so the fact that somebody hurt her right. also really played badly a huge too. part in it. Because he'd yes. be mad if it was any girl, but it's Bullet. Right. So I, it's even more so... Um, yeah, bullets getting to for him. him. Yeah, right. So lyric is talking to her mom. Right, and she's there with a girl named Rena. Right. Yeah, they're sitting there and they're like bumming smokes or okay, whatever. Okay. So and here's my favorite line. She, oh. Well, she hangs up. Did you? Is this is the line before she hangs up with her mom? No. Because she hangs up the phone and chucks it. So this is obviously one of these phones they call like burn phones. Yeah. That way you can't ever trace them. You don't know where they're at. The parents, if they if they did, which obviously I don't think this mom was any, like, interested in finding Lyric. But if they were, they can't trace where it is. So she chucks this phone. The pimps probably give it to them. Right. For, you know. To... Right. So Sarah walks up and right. asks where Bullet is. And Rena says, <laughs> I saw her drive off with an M&M wannabe with a molester stash. <laughs> <laughs> oh my, I swear to God, I almost wet my pants. I, that might died. be I'm quote like, of the year. <laughs> hold her. I'll like, shut up. And the look on Sarah's face it was, was the so greatest. Re- she, she made that smirk. It was so subtle. It was like a, you know, a Mona Lisa smirk, but oh, it was just, it was awesome. beautifully active. Cause you know, it was just fantastic. That, you know, that was the funniest thing she, <laughs> Oh, she was dying. Eminem wanted me with a porn, st- porn stash. So She's great. Like, oh, Holder. Yes. Thank you. Oh, so okay. funny. I thought that was an Eminem wannabe. I oh, just. Eminem wannabe. Wet my pants. I mean, that was the funniest dang thing ever. So Holder and Carl now. Okay. They're back at the precinct and they're interrogating Goldie. And they question him about his actions and with Bullet. And, of course, he's claiming it's not his video, of right, course. Right. Well, he, they ask him about what he did to, to Bullet. Mm-hmm. He's like, nothing, nothing. She was just there and, you know, whatever. He starts claiming that he's a businessman. Uh Turns out that the knife is not a match. That's okay. Well... All signs are now suddenly not pointing to gold, which happens in the, right. on the killing. Yes, every time you know. So you so, figure in the second episode they're not telling us who it is. Right, right. It's now, clearly this is, not going to be Goldie. But this, but this is really important right here because as this is all going down and we're starting to get that okay, they're flipping the cards. We know that it's not Goldie. They show Goldie a picture of Callie. What does he do immediately? I want my lawyer. Mm-hmm. Why is he reacting this way? Mm-hmm. I mean, yes, he should have been saying, I want my lawyer the entire time. Mm-hmm. Why, when the picture of Callie comes out, what does this guy know? He's got to know something. You know, something. There's something up there because well, he goes right and right to the lawyer. They, disco- they discuss his former rape charge right. against a 13-year-old, oh. you know, with oh. a 13-year-old. So he's, he certainly doesn't have... When he claims with the videos, he doesn't know anything about them, that people just rent that equipment and do that. Please. Yeah, right. And Sarah's watching this whole thing. But Carl, that was a whole disturbing thing because Carl's pretending to understand. So while they're questioning him, Carl's sitting there going, Oh, I get it, man. These young yeah, yeah, girls. Yeah. Like, I got, and he's, and it was seriously yeah, it was, weirding it was, me out. It was very creepy. Because I don't like Carl to begin with. Right, but I don't, I, but I'm in this situation, he was just doing it to bait him. To, right. He's yeah. playing good cop, right. but it was the worst kind of good cop. You don't, oh, I didn't want to hear any of that. And Sarah's watching it, and, and clearly from her face, yeah. you're seeing, yeah, Goldie's a bad guy, but he's not the murderer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so the, the lieutenant walks up to her Skinner, while she's watching. Yeah. Right. Skinner comes up. Um, no, no, there was the lieutenant. It wasn't Skinner, was it? Skinner. Skinner, isn't Skinner the lieutenant? Oh, yeah, he's the lieutenant. <laughs> I get so confused. I'm like, wait a second. I'm pretty sure he is the lieutenant. Well, you know what? In my notes, I write Skinner, and then I write lieutenant sometimes. Right, I think that was before we knew his name. Yeah, I yeah, I get confused. So, anyway, he walks up and has this idea that they want to release Goldie so they can follow him. Mm-hmm. You know, that kind of thing doesn't always work out to everybody's benefit. You know, I understand the logic behind it, but I... I yeah. How, so, many, how many kids are going to get hurt because you're letting this guy out? Yeah, and I don't know if Sarah necessarily buys it either, but he's what the boss. Do? Right, right. But she she asks him what he told his wife about them. Yes. Because 
she said she knows about us and she tells her and he didn't tell her no and she tells him about when she said she walked me to my car right she said you stay away from him and i know and so he doesn't know how she knows freaking out because yeah so So, good yes well i mean it's all inappropriate (laughs) it's all inappropriate good i'm glad she knows and i'm glad he feels busted now right and you know enough with the secrets yep so now we finally have holder and sarah conferring on the case. Finally. Now yes. we're starting to get back to what yes. we're waiting for. We're still not there. No, but we're, but getting, we're getting there. there. Yeah. And All Sarah right. tells him about seeing Adrian. Yeah. And doesn't well, know if well this Did isn't you? this I know what you're about to say. Okay. Remember when she went to the house in the last episode? Yet. Oh, I see. And she saw saying. him through the window. Yeah. That's what she's telling him about. Okay. I know what you're thinking because it's coming up. Because in the next one, it's she coming goes up. to actually see him. Right, right. But she says how she saw him. She was at the house and she saw him outside. Doesn't know if he knows anything about the bodies. Uh, she tells Holder that Trisha's finger was broken and the ring is missing. Uh, okay. Yeah. This is Getting really serious. important. This is something that we know is going to come up for Holder. Right. You know that this is going to be a big clue. It was like... Well, and how is Seward... The, if it's if it's matching up to the Seward case... Oh, then it's clearly... I mean, we, I think we already know, yeah. but, but now it'll be just real obvious, like, yep, there is absolutely no way if these if any of these bodies come back with a missing ring, missing fingers, mm-hmm. same kind of sever, then we know. Yep. So they got the wrong guy. They got the wrong guy for that. So Seward is back in his cell, and he harasses yeah. Francis. Here comes the razor blade. I don't the like it. The guard, after all the crap he's taken. Yes. And the other cellmate is riling him up. Right. Working it up. Mm-hmm. Now, okay, this was really intense. Yeah. I mean, I'm really thinking. Every scene with him is oh, intense. But I'm really thinking that that guard is going to pull up, go up to those bars, and he's going to slit just his slice throat him. or something. Yeah. But I don't know how. I mean, he'd have to really be able to get his hand out and really cut, unless that door was open. But no, through the bars would be really tough. He could, they can get pretty close up there. I mean, if they're he could scar him, but could he cut his throat? I mean, like he, the whole thing would be to kill him. You know? Yeah, that must not be what he, his intention. Maybe is it? Yeah. Well, we know. It's not his intention, but at this point, I really thought it was, and I kept thinking, how is he going to do this? Yeah. You know, maybe he did just want to scar his face or something, but, oh, I don't like this razor blade stuff. Mm-mm. I don't I don't like it one bit. No. Okay, let's so get, let's Sarah move on. Sarah goes to see Adrian. This is what you were thinking of. Yeah. She actually goes, it's at his school, and he's, like, walking like he's going to be walking home, and, and she stops him. He wants to see his dad. Right. And his, I wrote his foster mom or teacher intervenes. It, it, it was the teacher. Because he, I couldn't she, out. she kneels down and she's talking to him. He doesn't want to talk. She asks him about the drawing. That's when he says he wants to see his dad. And the teacher who's in the background, she starts to walk up and Sarah gets out of there. Whoop, 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 whoop. Yep, <laughs> she does. Sounds like Curly. She, high well, she, she actually it. falls on the ground and runs in a circle like Curly exactly. once and then and hightails then it, it then out of there. Runs out. Uh, so, yeah, it was definitely the teacher, because if it had been the foster mom, the foster mom would have said, hey, you, you know, what are you doing? Like, I know you. She didn't do that. Mm-hmm. So, it did look a little bit like her, but that was Yeah, she would have was. said, Sarah, what are you doing? You know, right. what are you doing here? Right. Yeah, no. So, I wrote, or I wrote both, because yeah, I couldn't Yeah, it was definitely out. the teacher. Okay, so, Holder and Carl are staking out Goldie's. And Carl asks him if he has any plans for Valentine's Day, while... Bullet starts beating on the car window. Yeah. I wanted to hear what his plans for Valentine's yeah. Day were. No, because they don't involve Sarah. They would so have been I uh, sitting in my dojo no, eating he's got that girlfriend. But sitting in his dojo eating duck funny. I don't want to talk about watching it. karate with his Not girlfriend. Not with Sarah. No, what is it? What did they watch? Was it like uh, Cake Master or something like that? I don't remember. Something weird. Oh no, it was Hillbilly Fishing. Hillbilly Hand Fishing. Is that what it was? I don't know. Where they were noodling. Oh Not gosh. snoodling, noodling. <laughs> so Bullet wants to know where Callie is. Yeah, and they and she's upset because she, they let Goldie go, and now she's scared. Right, right. And and hold her ass. He says, hey, "What did he do? Did Goldie do yeah. something to her?" And Bullet doesn't answer. Of course not. But she she just like blows up at him and goes, "Do your job. Find her." Right. Ah. Okay, well, I, this this is a really intense episode. There's a lot of like 
Oh, this is just a fantastic going on. season right now. The story is just amazing. So Sarah's at the mor- at a morgue. Oh, oh and this I put, is like first season. I hate this. I put a question mark because I was like, is it at a prison? Because no. it kind of looked like it. But it's not. But there are two lines of people crying, oh, waiting the, to know if their loved ones are victims. Yes, it's the parents of the victims and then probably people that aren't parents of the victims that are missing kids. Yeah. It's awful. For me, in that first season, remember when when Stan and when they first found the body, and it was just gut wrenching. And then they yes. had that one; they found the kid by the by the uh, uh, bridge, and then we thought it was going to be somebody in the area. We thought it was going to be Jack. Yeah, we thought it was Jack. Those kill me. So this scene, I was like, she's having to walk through this sea of people. It was torture, mm-hmm. just awful. And Sarah wants to know if the victim's wounds match Seward's wife, right? And the coroner says that they were three to five years in the water, and they were all killed within a six-month period. Right. And they're also so. still working on matching dental records. And the f- like, this is the information they have, but they still can't match up who they are. And the fingers were missing on these victims, on certain victims. They were sawed off. Yes. Yes. And as far as jewelry goes, he goes, you know, maybe, uh, we don't know, they could have fallen off in the pond. Mm-hmm. But come on, all of them. Yeah, missing fingers, no jewelry. It's getting pretty fishy. Okay, yeah. and those were biohazard bags, by the way, too. Those red bags. Right. I didn't know what they were. I I knew they were red bags, obviously, but now he refers to them as biohazard bags. So, how does this killer have access to these biohazard bags? Exactly. You know, I mean, I mean that would be my first lead. Is there, there are a lot of ways they could get them. You know, janitorial supply. You can buy them, but who would think to get? biohazard bags, especially red ones that are going to look so awesome when they're all out there in the water the way that looks. That was such a that was strong an visual. visual. All right, so we talk about Do you remember sewer. on Dexter when he found the, the sea of bodies, but they were all in, uh, instead of being in bobby bags like that, it was that guy that was taking them and putting them in drums. Yes. <laughs> Those big 50-gallon drums, and he saw that sea of, like, 50-gallon drums Absolutely. out there. Oh, gosh. Yuck. Okay. Anyway. So, so I digress. Not often, but I did this time. So, uh, oh, the other thing he says what? is that they did use the same weapon. I don't know if you said that. Okay. Nope. That's important. Okay. So Seward is listening to his cellmate ramble on and on. <laughs> and because says, that's don't you, what he does. He just goes, don't you ever shut up. Right. And Seward tells him about a riot at another prison. And it's clearly Francis's relative, like maybe a brother or yes. something, I'm guessing. And he took his eye out. Yes. He took the guy's eye out. Yeah, he's doing this definitely to taunt Francis. And Francis comes right up to his cell, and he crosses the red line. That's why I was saying he could have access. He if could they- have access. I'm just saying I don't know if he has enough to do what what we're scared he's going to do. Well, he gets called away before Seward can get him. Yes. So we didn't find out, Yes. thankfully. Not that I like Francis. You know what? I want to go back because we did miss a really funny line. I, I found it amusing that the talking guy, when Seward yells at him, you don't ever shut up, the guy goes, I'm a shark. Got to keep the water flowing over my gills. I thought oh, that was hilarious. Gosh. You should start saying that because even though, like, on this one, I'm doing a lot of talking, you talk like nobody's business. Not as so, much as our daughter. No, our daughter's even worse. She is a vocal shark. Got to keep that water flowing. Yes. Okay. So, that's that's it for that. I'm so nervous about this blade. I, I want that to be resolved. Yes. So, Holder and Carl are on a stakeout. And Holder is, of course, smoking and blowing smoke ring. Well, they're watching Goldie. Right. It's the stakeout at Goldie's, yeah. right. But he's sitting there blowing smoke rings. Uh, I don't know if Carl's too thrilled about that in his car. I wouldn't be. No. Uh as they're sitting there, we see Goldie up in the window look out at them. Yeah. They've been made. Yes. So they have there, to leave. There goes that. Yeah. Of course they're made. You've been sitting there a while, and Goldie... And you're blowing smoke rings. Yeah, Goldie had to know what was going on. Well, he he would know he was going to be followed. They let him go. There's no right. way they weren't going to watch him. Right. I mean, he may be dumb, but he's not that dumb. No. So Bullet and Lyric are hanging out, and Bullet asks her not to work for a while, She's got some money from her dad, which I put in quotes. Yeah, yeah. And offered to share it. And Lyric's boyfriend walks up with Rena, 
and he's going to where they found the bodies, and they all decide to go with him. Oh, oh, I hate it. Oh. Why would you possibly? Can you imagine? Although I think and I would at would that just age. Be, lyric would be so traumatized, though. Yeah, but wouldn't we do that at yeah, that age? Yeah, we would. Of course we would. Yeah. I mean, but at this age, no! I wouldn't now, but I would have at that age. No. Uh, and Lyric asks her about the bruises, and she just denies anything happened. So she's not even telling. She's embarrassed. This is mm-hmm. awful. She's not even telling Lyric that, you know, she could. She doesn't even have to say what happened. She could just say, Goldie beat me up. Right. But, but she no. she's even embarrassed by that. Yep. So we find out what Seward wanted to do with the razor blade. He cuts the A off oh, his chest. That's what it was. So when I said before, we know that he's not doing yeah. this. We did. We didn't know at that point. I thought he was really there to hurt Francis, but I think this was his plan all along. I think this was yeah. planned out. He's separating himself from his former life. He's taking Adrian. He's literally cutting Adrian off right. of his body, which is insane. Yeah. So this is when it starts to move quickly. Yeah. So we have Holder, and she walk. He walks in to see Sarah. Right. And they have three ID'd girls, and they talk about Adrian at this point. Well, they, they, they've got cops sitting there going through Goldie's porno tapes. That's how they're doing and it. Well, a cop comes in with a DVD. Right. And uh, so that was an interesting exchange. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, you know what? I didn't even think that's what was going to go on. It didn't hit me that, like, they've got to go through all those tapes. I mean, what an awful job these guys mm-hmm. have. They have to sit there and... Try to pick out faces. And, uh, yeah. Can you imagine? No. And you know what, Marth? If this whole podcasting thing doesn't work out, I am still not going to go be a cop. Okay. Okay? Deal. Just putting that out there. I'm pretty sure they wouldn't hire you. Yeah. The kids are at the crime scene and Bullet and Lyric hold hands. Right. Because it's very... It's terrifying! <laughs> and, it's terrifying! Uh, we see Seward is bleeding badly. Yes. And then Holder and Sarah watch the DVD, and it's Goldie asking Callie questions and making a porn video. Well, no. Do we know it was Goldie asking the questions? Yeah. No. I wrote down it's Goldie, and then I put question mark after it. Well. We don't know if it's Goldie, but it's it's in Goldie's possession for sure. You're putting a question mark. And I am not putting a question mark. And the last thing that we'll he says, right. the last thing that the voice says is tells her to take off her shirt. Yeah. And end. Yeah, what a way to end an episode. Oh, so I was think it's t- Goldie. You don't think it's Goldie? We'll see I don't, who's I don't right. think it's Goldie on there. Um, I will say though that I, I think this was this was a really solid transition episode. Like when you think about it, when you go back and think about it, there wasn't a lot of action necessarily. Mm-hmm. There was a lot of story moving forward. Uh, it was one of those episodes where. We got a lot of blanks kind of filled in. Some new questions came up, but it wasn't like action. Like, we didn't move the story necessarily forward, but that's okay. This was so well written and so good. Yes. Uh, I think coming off that first episode, which was so shocking and had that shocking ending, I think that it needed to be like this. Yeah, I agree. So... It kind of kind of a bummer though. Like like you and I are like having a lot of fun with this one because it's well, okay, it's just seriously. like you remember in the you remember in the first season when they did the whole thing with the cage. Right. How are you supposed to have fun with well with we, all these dead teenager girls? And it's, and it's so hard. And, like it's girls awful. getting beaten up and their parents don't want them. And it's awful. I mean, I just I want to go get them all and just bring them all home. Oh, I know. It's very painful. It's very painful indeed. All right. Well, let's get on to the next episode. Okay. Well, let's wrap it up. So thank you for listening, everybody. You can find, I'm going to try and cheer myself back up here. You can find past episodes of The Killing Podcast and all of our other podcasts. We've got well over 30 at this point at our website, which is www.southgatemediagroup.com. You can also follow us on Twitter at The Killing Pod. Uh, You can follow me on Twitter at R Southgate. And Martha tweets from SMG Pods. You can find us on Tumblr, where we uh, post things about the killing and Doctor Who and Sherlock and Elementary and Walking Dead and just like everything that we have a show about, we put different blog postings up and that there. So follow us on Tumblr. Just look for Southgate Media Group. That's the easiest way to find it. Uh, Find us on Instagram. Find us on uh, Stitcher. Find us on SoundCloud, iTunes, basically any place that you get 
your podcast. If you're not finding our show there, let us know and we'll join that directory. We'll get on there because we want to expose this show to as many people as we possibly can. I was can. glad you didn't just say expose, uh, expose us. Yeah, right, right. Uh, especially after ourselves. this episode. Yeah. I don't want to even... No, we're not exposing ourselves. I don't want to step on any landmines. Uh, but we definitely want to get this ramped up because season four is coming in two months, a month and a half, something like that. So we're going to have this wrapped up by then, this season, and then, boom, season four. And we want to really have people listening at that point. So tell your friends, share it on Facebook, share it on Twitter, and also please review us and rate us at like iTunes and Stitcher. It helps other people find us. There you go. We are done for the Killing Podcast. I'm Rob Southgate. And I'm Martha Southgate. And maybe next time we'll find out what happened to Callie. Yep. I hope so. If you would like to donate to help pay for this and other Southgate Media Group podcasts, simply go to our website, southgatemediagroup.com, and click on the Donate button. It can be as little as a dollar or, well, as much as you want. (laughs) Help keep this fun going by supporting this and our other shows. Thanks again for listening, everyone. You're the best fans in the world.